Hey everyone and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Angela here and if there's anything Hollywood loves, it's a messy love triangle. This generation was raised on the love triangle of Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, and Nick Jonas, the one that saw the Damon, Stefan, and Elena love triangle. And in the last few years, we have seen one person star in two love triangles. Yep, I'm talking about Sabrina Carpenter, who is gathering quite a reputation for herself by starring in the role of the other woman in yet another love triangle story but this time with Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello, who were one hell of an overexposed couple. From the start of Shawn and Sabrina to Shawn and Camila's reconciliation to the drama that continued the 2024 VMAs, I got you covered, so take a seat, grab your popcorn, and get ready. Before we start, be sure to like and subscribe for new videos each week. We cover everything from pop culture to royal family drama. Follow us on social media at Scandalous Media, where we post reels and TikToks on all trending drama. And without further ado, let's begin. The Other Woman Sabrina Carpenter went from the trenches of Disney to main pop girl status as it discussed in my deep dive on her. In that video, I talked about how the love triangle with Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett helped launch her to mainstream fame and took her from random Disney chick to essentially who she is now, a superstar in the making. Now whether you like it or not, drama sells. This was evident by Skin, Sabrina's response to Driver's License, being Sabrina's first Billboard Hot 100 entry nearly 10 years into her career. Drama is free promotion that builds intrigue. Oftentimes, the song is good, but do people know the song exists? If you want all the statistics and tea about that, go check out my video about it. But for now, let's talk about Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello. There are video chapters available. Sabrina and Shawn's short-lived romance. Sabrina Carpenter and Shawn Mendes were rumored to be dating when they were seen together in February 2023, following his high-profile split from Camila Cabello, whom he started dating in 2019 after years of friendship. Sabrina and Shawn's first public interaction that sparked dating rumors was on December 25th, 2022, when Sabrina commented, Was it cold, though? on Shawn's Instagram post. Then on January 20th, 2023, Shawn was seen in Paris at the Costas Hotel. The trip seemed leisurely, as he wasn't there for work-related reasons, but just seven days later on January 27th, Sabrina posted photos in Paris at that same hotel, so fans started to think that they were secretly in Paris together. However, it's worth mentioning that she was there for Paris Fashion Week, so I believe that was just a coincidence, since celebrities stay at the same hotels all the time. At this point, the entire internet was convinced Shawn Mendes was dating his 51-year-old chiropractor, Dr. Jocelyn Miranda. These dating rumors started in July 2022 and were going on for about a year after. This is because of how close they seemed on social media and because they were constantly photographed together, whether that was hiking or going on lunch dates. The Daily Mail, who snapped those lunch photos, said that Sean and Jocelyn laughed when they were called a fit couple. So basically, they weren't denying the rumors at the time. Also around this time, Sean had canceled his world tour after seven shows and later told the Wall Street Journal magazine in February 2023 that he did that to focus on his mental health, which led him to lean on his support system, a group of which Dr. Jocelyn appeared to be a part of. So after a year of drama about whether or not Sean is dating his chiropractor, fans let out a sigh of relief when he was spotted with Sabrina in February 2023. They were seen on a stroll on Sunday, February 26th in West Hollywood. It looked rather casual with Sabrina in sweats and Sean in a jean jacket and blue pants. That confirmed what Dumas posted on February 19th that the two were getting cozy on a date. That same day on February 26th, Camila liked this video of Sabrina. I'm going to elaborate on this later because some people believe that Camila was stalking Sabrina on social media, but for now, let's wrap up Sean and Sabrina. On March 10, 2023, Sean and Sabrina were spotted leaving Miley Cyrus's album release party together when he held the door open for her. On March 12th, they both attended the Vanity Fair's Oscars after party, but they didn't pose together on the red carpet, However, they were spotted chatting in the background of this video where fans were screaming at them to the point where Sabrina even moved to be in frame and seen as opposed to being blocked by Sean. And while being interviewed, she was seen looking in Sean's direction twice. My friends, I'm like, this is my last hurrah. And they're like, wait, what? They're like, what's hurrah? The following day on March 13th, a source told Entertainment Tonight that Sean and Sabrina are seeing each other. They have been hanging out a lot and trying to keep things low key. They were at a birthday party together a couple of weeks ago and were cute together. Sean is happy. That same night, Camila posted this photo, which looked like a response to the news. 
The source also took that time to say that there was no truth to the rumors that Sean was ever dating his chiropractor, explaining it has never been romantic between them. Brooke Schofield from the Cancelled podcast told co-host Hannah Mojo that she saw Sean and Sabrina together and they looked like they were together. No, yeah, I saw them together at a friend's birthday party recently and they seemed pretty together to me. Also on March 13th, an LA resident who works at Pixar tweeted that she saw Sabrina sitting on Sean's lap. However, there were no photos of that. Thanks to the official announcement, fans went back as far as January and noticed that Sean was wearing this necklace that they believe is Sabrina's birthstone. He also wore that necklace the night of the Vanity Fair Oscar party. But the tea is, Sean has been wearing that necklace for years. Here he is wearing it at the 2019 AMAs where he attended the event with Camila. Then it seemed like Sean was tired of the rumors so he told RTL Boulevard, we are not dating, in regards to him and Sabrina on March 17th. Sean and Camila's reunion. A month later, on April 15th, Sean was spotted kissing Camila at Coachella, which came as a shock considering they split up in 2021. Four days after that, on April 19th, Sabrina posted a TikTok of the speech she gave before performing Tornado Warnings, a song on her Emails I Can't Send album where she sings about ignoring the red flags her partner gives her, which sounded like she was referencing Sean going back to Camila a month after being seen with her. Through time and through going back to things that aren't good for you, you, you get closer to yourself. And I'm really grateful that I was able to do that. Now, if you ask me, Sabrina and Sean seemed cute together. But if you asked me on a deeper level, i tell you that I believe that Sabrina and Sean were a publicity stunt used to revive Sean's career and try to make Sabrina somewhat mainstream as she was struggling to chart. Link in the description if you want some inside tea. So that was it for Sean and Sabrina, who was rumored to be dating Barry Cogan toward the end of 2023. And February 2024 is when they went public with their romance. Sean and Camila were then linked a couple of more times. Sean confirmed they are back together when asked about it on a hike. Are you guys back together? No, yeah. Yeah, that's good. They were then spotted holding hands at the end of April. Then they were spotted in New York City. Then they went to the Eras tour together in May of 2023, with a source telling Us Weekly in June 2023 that their feelings came flooding back after reconnecting. That same month, a source told Entertainment Tonight, Sean and Camilla broke up and are no longer seeing each other. They gave things a try, but ultimately, the timing isn't right for either of them. They're both staying busy and doing their own things. But here's where the drama really starts. The Love Triangle Explosion on August 23rd, Sabrina released her new album, Short and Sweet, featuring a few songs that allude to her short-lived romance with Shawn Mendes. Sabrina's album starts with the song, Taste, where she sings about a mystery man unable to decide between his ex-girlfriend and someone new. The song itself addresses her ex's on-again and off-again girlfriend. The lyrics are, I heard you're back together, and if that's true, you'll just have to taste me when he's kissing you. If you want forever, I bet you do, just know you'll taste me too. Now, Sean and Camila reuniting by kissing at Coachella was huge because they were such a high-profile couple, and at one point, I even coined them the modern-day Jelena. But Sabrina doesn't shy away from not only pointing out their reunion, but their kiss as well. She later presents evidence of her impact on this ex by singing, He's funny, now all his jokes hit different, guess who he learned that from? And one thing Sabrina is getting a reputation for is that she's pretty funny. I even talked about how her personality played a role in her popularity in my video about her rise. She also sings, You're wondering why half his clothes went missing, my body's where they're at, which brought up a couple of moments where it seemed like Sabrina was wearing Sean's clothes. In her song Coincidence, she sings, What a surprise, your phone just died, your car drove itself from LA to her thighs, Palm Springs looks nice, but who's by your side? Damn it, she looks kind of like the girl you outgrew, at least that's what you said, what a coincidence. Now, these lyrics allude to Sean kissing Camila at Coachella a month after being spotted with Sabrina. And where does Coachella take place? In the greater Palm Springs region. So now we're getting ultra specific. She also sings trying to turn the past into the present tense, aka Sean getting back together with his ex. The song also alludes to the ex of her man having a sixth sense and knowing the moment they became closer. Sabrina sings, and without her even being here, she's back in your life. Which brings up the theory that Camila was stalking Sabrina online by liking her posts and posts related to her days after Sean and Camila's spotting and then in the months that followed. Camila was seen liking Sabrina's posts from the end of 2023 to even 2024. In the chorus, Sabrina sings about not being shocked that the man that she was with has split up with his ex a second time, singing, Oh wow, you just broke up again, what a coincidence, which is the premise of the whole song. 
Sean and Camila split in June 2023, and Camila was later photographed looking down with a shirt that says, Be nice to me, I had a hard day. On June 9th, Sean released What the Hell Are We Dying For, which seemed to reference the split with the lyrics being, if we don't love like we used to, if we don't care like we used to, what the hell are we dying for? If you're not mine and I'm not yours, what the hell are we dying for? In Sharpest Tools, Sabrina sings about being with a guy and meeting his best friends, and then a bird flies by and he forgets everything and she doesn't hear a word from him. This brought up Sean's best friend, Prashan, following Sabrina when they were spotted together and liking her posts. However, I think most people forget that this is a celebrity after all, so being followed and having your posts liked is on par with the rest of the millions doing the same, which brings up the point of, is it that serious or are they just lyrics? Which I'm going to talk about. Now, Camila was quick to hit back at Sabrina's taste when she posted this TikTok of her singing her song, June Gloom, which is believed to be about Sean and Sabrina's fling. And it was captioned, hope it'll burn out, but it just gets bigger with the eye roll emoji. Camila sings, she's cool, I heard, won't act surprised, I saw the pictures. And if she's so amazing, why are you on this side of town? If you like her so much, what are you here trying to find out? Which references Sean Miller's reunion the month after he was rumored to be dating Sabrina. And one time I had the always brilliant idea of reconnecting um, with this ex. I don't know what I was more drunk off of, honestly. Him or the alcohol. Timing is of the essence here since this song was released in June on the CXOXO album, but funny enough, Camila wasn't even promoting it as much as the other songs that were chosen to be singles and promotional singles. So to post that at the height of the drama seemed like a direct reply. Now, June Gloom was originally teased in April 2023 in a now-deleted Instagram post, which I scoured the internet for and couldn't find, when Camila posted a teaser of the song with different lyrics at the time, which were, Are you coming to Coachella? If you don't, it's whatever. If you do, honey, it'll be all I think about. She captioned the post 4.12 with flower emojis, and two days later, they were making out on the 14th. On the Call Her Daddy podcast in March 2024, Camila said that she got back together with Sean so she doesn't live with the what if possibility, saying that she's impulsive like that but they broke up because they're not a fit and it didn't feel right. She even agrees with the host that she stalks the girls of her exes and even admits to stalking the ex of a guy she is dating. Where I would be dating a guy and like stalking his ex. Uh Still, honestly, I definitely like... After all of that, they were spotted together on July 14th, 2024, because they were seated next to each other at a soccer game in Miami. Drama to Sell The drama exploded following the release of Sabrina's album on August 23rd. Camila's response to the drama was her TikTok singing June Gloom on August 25th. And Sean is expected to respond to this drama when he releases his new album in October, which is basically his comeback album after Wonder in 2020, an album and era that underperformed, especially after Sean cancelled his tour after just seven shows. Camila's CXOXO album is also underperforming, being her lowest charting album to date, but she's trying to revive that era by capitalizing on this drama. On August 29th, an interview Camila did with Capital One was posted, and there she sang the lyrics to Espresso. I'm working late, cause I'm a singer. Mind you, this is at the height of the drama, post-release of Taste, because the internet automatically ran with the fact that it's about Sean and Camila. Wait, is this f***ing play about us? So we can now see how both Camila and Sabrina are feeding into that. On August 30th, Camila teased new music, which many interpreted as a response to Taste. The song is titled Godspeed, and she wrote in her caption, I wish you well, but far away from me, Godspeed, 9 slash 6, aka its release date. And this is when Camila started teasing the CXOXO Magic City edition of the album. We see Camila dipping herself in the ocean where she gets rid of her blonde hair and comes out with brunette hair, aka her signature look. What's funny is that in February 2024, when Camila started teasing the CXOXO era, many people were quick to accuse her of copying Sabrina with the blonde hair and even saying that she was stealing her style and trying to dress like her. Around this time, Sabrina and Barry made their first public appearance at W's Grammy's after party, where Sabrina posted a photo dump that Sean liked. Also around this time, a video of Camila running into Olivia Rodrigo and her boyfriend, Louis Partridge, from June went viral and Camila has been commenting under Olivia's photos for a while now, which is interesting because I don't really recall them being friends. The VMAs 
Shortly afterward, it was announced that all three of them were scheduled to perform at this year's VMAs, so everyone was seated for the drama. Sabrina arrived in this silver old Hollywood glamour outfit, while Camila arrived in this black gothic looking outfit. She later said that the VMAs were like a funeral to her, saying, death to the things that are negative, death to the people and the situations that try to bring you down. She even captioned her outfit on Instagram writing, I had a funeral for all the BS, past, present, and future. Godspeed. Her outfit resembled the funeral outfits worn by Sabrina and Jenna Ortega in the Taste music video, so it seemed like she was directly referencing the drama. Camila's performance opened up with a blonde Camila singing June Gloom, to which she stopped playing the video and then a brunette Camila started singing Godspeed, and later on she smashed her laptop. Sean pulled up to the VMAs in a black suit, which he captioned a series of photos on Instagram writing, pulling up to my own funeral. So again, we can see how all artists are feeding into this narrative. Sabrina performed first a melody of her three hits, Please Please Please, Taste, and Espresso. She recreated the concept of the Taste music video with her separating the alien couple and later kissing the girl alien. Sean debuted his new single, Nobody Knows at the VMAs, which seemed to reference both Sabrina and Camila. The opening lyrics are, When your touch walks me home, when you taste this good, aka Sabrina's song, Taste. In the second verse, he sings, When the bottle is open, anything can happen, where he seems to reference a drunk-looking Camila at Coachella when they were spotted making out. But the next verse, Flying Too Close to the Sun, seems like a direct reference to Camila's Instagram bio, which is, Long, thick, black hair, turned white from flying too close to the sun. There were no interactions between the three of them, but just like they attended the VMAs, they also attended Taylor Swift's VMA after party. Spilling the tea. Is it that serious or are they just lyrics? If you want my genuine opinion on this drama, I think it's all manufactured and all parties are using timing to their advantage. After all, would we really be here watching Sabrina Carpenter top the charts had she not been in a similar scandal four years ago? Sabrina originally cracked the mainstream world after starring as the other woman in the love triangle drama with Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett, which was also a big focus in two of her eras, the skin era and the emails I can't send era, featuring Because I Liked a Boy. So what am I trying to say? Drama sells, and it seems like all parties are doing this for attention and enjoying it. Sure, everyone is talented and capable and yada yada yada, but you need drama to hook the general public onto you. I mean, take a look at the peak of Sean and Camila with their duet, Senorita. That song was huge and it was everywhere, mainly because it was also fueled by Sean and Camila's romance, whether that was the steamy music video, the VMA's performance, their over-the-top PDA at the beach, and more. And sometimes, lyrics are just relatable, and in the case of Sabrina, it's very much, well, if the shoe fits. I believe that she makes her lyrics ultra-specific like Taylor Swift, but at the same time, they're relatable. The taste and skin parallel in the lyrics prove that. In Skin, Sabrina sings, You can try to get under my skin while he's on mine, about Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett. And in Taste, Sabrina sings, You'll just have to taste me when he's kissing you. And I noticed that Sabrina's genre right now reflects this idea of a confident baddie who's either the girl who got picked or the girl who got left but is still doing better. After all, most people forget that Camila Cabello was the original Taylor Swift prodigy. Taylor and Camila coughed up a friendship real quick as Camila was gearing to surprise Fifth Harmony by leaving, which the remaining members mentioned in a statement saying they learned about her departure via her representatives after begging her to at least end on a good note with one final album. And when Camila was the new hot thing back in the day, she was seated next to Tay Tay and her bestie Selena Gomez, who were throwing Camila birthday parties as Taylor watched from her seat at the VMAs, while Camila and Sean were steaming up the VMA stage with Senorita. So we are looking at two girlies who learned from the best on how to have the general public decode lyrics and look for signs when it may not have been that deep. Sean and Camila ended things in 2021, so for him to be seen with Sabrina in 2023 seemed like more than enough time apart from Camila to have moved on. I covered Sean and Camila heavily on my blog from 2016 to 2021. I knew the Friends to Lovers storyline, the planned paparazzi strolls, and the dating Sean Mendes story before breaking up with Matthew Hussey all too well if you know what I mean. Sean and Camila did one too many attention-seeking things back in their day, and Sabrina seems like she was the head of the Sabrina and Sean campaign, because tell me how he seemed completely uninterested? And notice how it was Sabrina reaching out to Sean first, so it's definitely possible that she left little breadcrumbs for fans to follow, because he was quick to be like, we're not dating, not even a month later. I even heard from industry sources that Sean always got along with Camila because they were close, so it was fun for him to do a beach stint or an aggressive makeout video or a quarantine stroll, 
but he didn't really vibe with Sabrina, which was evident by him shutting down the rumors despite publicists claiming they were dating. All I'm saying is, in my decade of covering celebrities, I've learned not to buy into any drama that is fueled by the celebrity, because if they truly wanted anything to stay private, it definitely could have. We barely know anything about Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth's divorce, and even Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater, despite the scandal they were involved in, which I also covered. But when you have celebrities who seem eager to make a comeback evident by their declining numbers or one celebrity capitalizing on the hype after trying her luck for 10 years, well, you gotta take the chance and that's what I believe is happening with Sabrina Carpenter, Camila Cabello, and Shawn Mendes. But what do you guys think? Well, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe for weekly videos and shorts on all trending gossip. Follow us on our social media. Check out our blog, scandalous.media, for inside celebrity tea. And as always, I'll see you next time.